Please, let's take our seats. Okay, welcome to this evening's meeting. We're going to have our invocation from Pastor Dr. Leon Beeler of Gateway Restoration Church in Forest Park. It will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by our Veteran of the Month, who is uh, Colonel, I think Lieutenant Colonel. Let me make sure here. Colonel Brad Beasley. Colonel Brad Beasley. I was going to make you a lieutenant colonel, sir. All right, please stand with me. Pastor Beasley. I'd like to uh, quote a scripture here, if you don't mind. This is Psalms 127 and 1, and it simply says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watch it in vain. And uh, the premise of my prayer is that when I was praying with to pray for you guys, I saw y'all as master builders and watchmen. So let's pray. Father, we come boldly to your throne of grace. We come in a new and living way. We come through the blood of Jesus Christ, and we come crying, Abba, Father, for truly you are our Father, and we are your children. Lord, as I come before you this night, Lord, I come praying for the ones that are considered to be the master builders of this house. And Lord, I ask you to endure them with wisdom, Lord, that they will understand and have the vision for the house that they're building. Lord, give them the skills that are necessary to make sure that the foundation is sound, that every part is built according to specs. Lord, I ask you to bless them with wisdom and understanding and give them keen senses, Lord, to understand what to watch for, the enemies that are coming against the city those that would want to tear it down and destroy it. Lord, give them the fortitude. Give them the understanding, Lord. Give them the skills that are needed to maintain the house. Lord, bless Clayton County. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Join me with the, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Clayton County Board of Commissioners November 19th, 2019 business meeting. Our first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Any commissioners have any amendments? Uh, I would, uh, Mr. Chair, resolution 2019-139A. Mr. G.K., is that the one we just discussed with our quality of life issues? It's, it's the item, item 22. Just want to clarify. That. Please take the mic. No, number 19 is the uh, UGA memorandum. Yeah, it might be to uh, chapter 2 offenses and miscellaneous provisions. It's I think that's the quality the one of life. About recreational mm -hmm. vehicles and commercial one. vehicles parking. I, yeah, we she did. November. She got the wrong one. Okay, hold on a second, okay? Let me she get has November 5th. I apologize. Hold on. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, I apologize. It is number 19. Uh, I would, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to take that item separately, please. Okay, the motion is to take ordinance 2019-143, item 19, separate. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. Thank you. I'd like to make an amendment to two items, the first one being item 16, district attorney's uh, request to strike additional positions 
the additional position of chief investigator, take that off. Only lead chief administrator. And also strike chief investigator two, two uh, sentences down. Grade 33, step 11, total compensation 100, 109,941. Strike all that and just leave chief administrator Grade 35, step one, total compensation, compensation 113,462. Drop down to the next paragraph where the cost of this request, take out the 223 and replace that with 113,462. That's the first request. The second one is the sheriff's request. He is requesting that we take or reduce the grade for the chief deputy sheriff's reclassification from 35, 38, scratch that and make it 35, 28, total compensation 158,705 where on the agenda is stated at 178,671, take that out. And at a total cost or difference being 19,278,000. ,000. Are you clear on that, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Okay, those two items, uh, I'll make a motion to amend those two accordingly. Is there a second? Second. Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. I have an amendment. Um, item number three, I want to take that one separately, please. Item number three, recommendation is to uh, take separately on the regular agenda recommendation for award and approval for contracts, PSA 19-236, financial services for Clayton County. Uh, is there a second? Second, if you care. Those in favor, aye. Uh, Opposed. One, one more correction, Mr. Chair. Okay. It's just a wording correction. Yes, ma'am. And I realize that on the notice for staff attorney, it reads on item I that the Board of Commissioners has identified the following three candidates as a finalist. Um, I would like to have it to be edited to state that chairman and staff have identified because it hasn't been brought before the board to vote on these three as a finalist. Hold on a second. The Board of Commissioners identified the final three candidates as a finalist. Okay, we interviewed the three finalists. No, we haven't voted that these are the three finalists. I had to request to see the others that interviewed. So we didn't participate as a board. It says okay, Board so of Commissioners. So it shouldn't say the chairman, it should say the interview panel identified the following three candidates as finalists. Or the staff. Or staff. Panel, staff, however you want to put it. Panel is fine. Interview panel. That's right. fine, just for accuracy. Because it gives the illusion that this board voted or had say in the well, three. That's no problem, I just want to make clear that the chairman didn't sit on the hiring board. I oh, I hear you, sir. Uh, is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. I believe that is, you got another one? Uh, yes. Yes, go ahead. I would like to pull out uh, resolution, well, it's item 20 and 21. My screen has jumped. Okay, okay you like to pull this out for regular for re Yes. All right, resolution 2019-145 out of 21, a resolution to initiate a tax amendment to the zoning ordinance and to modify the zoning map accordingly. Uh, the motion is to put, place it on the regular agenda. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Any others? Okay, hearing none, then I will uh, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the veteran of the month. And he has already made himself abundantly clear that he is Colonel Brad Beasley. 
Okay, after completing his studies at Central State University, Colonel Brad Beasley served as a U.S. Army officer for over 25 years, during which time he earned a master's degree in administration from Central Michigan University. He is airborne and ranger qualified and a graduate of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College and the U.S. Army War College. During his Army career, he served as an infantry rifle platoon leader and commanded at the company, battalion, and brigade levels of leadership. He has led organizations with over 2,500 soldiers and civilian employees and has managed annual budgets in excess of 200 million. Since retiring from the Army in 1998, Colonel Beasley has worked in executive level positions in Fortune 500 companies, including Lockheed Martin Corporation and Serco. And during, this, during his corporate years, he accumulated over 20 years experience as vice president program manager, project director, business developer, and sales director, personally responsible for winning and managing over $225 million in Department of Defense and other federal contracts. In 2006, Colonel Beasley started his own consultant firm, the Beasley Group. Colonel Beasley has and continues to serve in leadership positions of several military service organizations, including the Association of the United States Army, the Tuskegee Airmen, the Military Officers Association of America, and the Military Order of the World Wars. Colonel Beasley was elected to two-year terms as president of the National Memorial Day Association of Georgia and as chairman of the Board of Directors, Atlanta Chapter of Tuskegee Airmen. He also served two years as chairman of the Clayton County Chamber of Commerce Military Affairs Council. He is a lifetime member of the Tuskegee Airmen, Inc. He's also a Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, Inc. and Central State University National Alumni Association. In March of 2018, Colonel Beasley was inducted into the Central State University Achievement Hall of Fame. Colonel Beasley and his wife, Deborah, have three grown children. Alina, Bo, and Emerald, and three grandchildren, Lola Maria, uh, Lola Maria, Aiden, and Nova. He and his wife reside in Riverdale, Georgia. Please help me welcome Colonel Beasley.
very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service and the service of all our veterans. The board will now hear public comments. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparatory remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. Atania Jane Funny. Good evening. Good evening. To the chairman, vice chair, commissioners, community. My name is Atanya Jean Funny, unincorporated Clayton County. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for holding the joint meeting with the Economic Development Board. Um, I wish you could have been there, Ms. Gregory, but I'm sure they um, informed you of what was going on. Um, today, I do want to speak about the Economic Development Plan. So I have attended a lot of the economic development meetings. Unfortunately, they do not allow for public comment. So I'm using this opportunity to address why I'm here. And I want to know how can the general public meet with the economic development board and the authority. Um, I believe there's a serious disconnect between what the residents want and what the authority is presenting to the economic development board. So the residents are saying they want fine dining, they want retail, activities for the kids, but what they are being proposed with are storage facilities, fast food restaurants, general dollar stores, and distribution plants. So the last meeting, we have another lettuce distribution plant that's coming. So Clayton County is now saturated. So I want to know how does the Economic Development Board talk to the general citizens to find out what exactly do we want? I've never seen a survey come to my house asking me anything. I've never seen a general meeting where they meet with the residents. Um, when the board member asked if the lettuce plant was going to offer a livable wage, the board, the, the director of the Economic Development Authority didn't have the answer. Our storage facilities are using prime real estate, but they're only hiring about three to five employees. So how do we build this, bridge this gap? So where can I find the plan for Clayton County? A five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year economic development plan? What initiatives are being put in place to recruit the businesses that we want? How can the community assist with these initiatives? We all know that the airport was named an international airport before International Airlines was flying there. So where are our visionaries that are thinking that we, can, we deserve more in Clayton County? So I have visited the office several times. I've had long conversations with Ms. Erica and Mr. Will. I have yet to meet with Mr. Stevens, but um, I have asked the question every time I go, is there anybody at the Economic Development Authority that lives in Clayton County? I haven't gotten a clear answer on that. So it's really hard for me to have a conversation with people that don't live in Clayton County. When I get ready to go to take my child somewhere for their birthday, I'm going to Urban Air over in Henry County. I'm going to Sky Zone. It's not here. But when I get there, I'm seeing Clayton County residents that are also there. So you can't tell us we're not spending the money. When I want to go to uh, somewhere it's, for it's my funny, anniversary. I'm sorry, your time is up, though. Okay. Uh, but we got the point. But, but just to add to that, the uh, Development Authority has an autonomous board. Uh, they don't, they work with us, but they definitely, I'm not going to say definitely, they don't always take direction from us. So it's a work in progress in terms of the relationship between the two boards, hence that's why we had the joint meeting. But those questions is best asked of the Development Authority board. So, so I go back to my initial question, how do we as citizens <laughs> Um, ask for a meeting with the board where they are going to listen to us because we go to the meetings and we're not allowed to say anything. They are the only ones, again, they're autonomous. We can't make them meet with you or talk to them. But what we can do is appoint them. So when those appointments come up, if, if it's not working out, then we're going to move on with somebody who is more uh, responsive to the community's need in that area. 
So is it possible that we can have a meeting with the director? Call him and ask again. Mr. Stevens, is it possible that we can have a meeting with him? Address, ma'am, Ms. Funny, oh, address sorry. us. If you want to meet with him in the back, then he's sitting out there, feel free to do so. Okay. But thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Alvin Farmer. Mr. Farmer, proactive community activist, unincorporated Clayton County. I will start with, since we got some kids here, I was watching ESPN, the National Urban League, and I would advise y'all to write this down, putourchildrenfirst.org. I went and looked at that. We need some help in Clayton County, and that will help us. Second thing, this is the fourth time I've got this information that the uh, Chief Roberts police are doing the school police job. I called uh, Dr. Smith, from my understanding, he's third in line at the uh, Board of Education and informed him of this and let him know that he need to check his people and make sure that they're doing their job. So uh, Chief Roberts said if the numbers are correct, they fit the one people under man, so we don't need them overworked. <coughs> uh, the four-way stop at the Lovejoy Library, I asked for a uh, stoplight. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe we need to work on a four-way stop there. Our commissioner uh, warned his thing, and then we had it at night, and we can see the traffic. If you're coming out there and turning left, like I have to do to go home, we have an issue. Fire station number six, my information, it was five months past due and $2,000 over budget. I walked through there with a lieutenant. I didn't get his name. I found some flaws in the system along, along with a security police. I also was the electronic installation team. We have flaws in that system. Chief Roberts had a breakfast at the uh, Chick-fil-A outstanding uh, event and everything. He brought all his uh, top people out there, and, and they talked to a lot of uh, people that came through. I'm sure they were pleased. I know I was. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, I need a dead end sign in my subdivision. When, you, when you're going through that, a lot of people come in and turn around because they think it's, it's one way. It, it's a way in and a way out. I have one way in and uh, one way out. The uh, bus stop at the aquatic center has, stopped, has still has not been removed. So somebody gave me some information, and I got another person that I'm going to contact tomorrow to uh, tell them about this. Mr. Edmondson, who used to be chairman, says uh, at the development thought it meeting that he seen me walking down Terror Road picking up trash which he was right. I asked him, would he join me? He hadn't gave me an answer yet. So I asked one of y'all, would y'all join me? Uh, the recycling center, the grass has been cut and the trees have been trimmed. I went through there. Actually, I went back to uh, recycle some uh, more stuff in there. Uh, I went to the Youth Empow Empowerment Council. I, I think I emailed everybody on my email. and that, It was at the uh, Cobb Galleria exceptional things. We should have had some of our students from Clayton County there. I brought back what I could and gave them to the uh, South Rec Center and you can check with Mrs. Dow. I gave her a lot of the stuff that I got from that. I was the only person I seen in Clayton County at that thing. And I mean it was, it was beautiful. And that's why I brought the information back. Time's up, sir. Thank you. Right. Sam Seaton. Sam Seaton. No, Sam. All right, Timothy Vondale Jefferson. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Timothy Vondale Jefferson, unelected citizen of District 3. I am uh, beyond frustrated. Uh, it is absolutely horrendous that the citizens of this community elect four commissioners and one chairman, but we keep hearing that development authority is autonomous. I uh, <clears throat> have done quite a few years of due diligence on the development authority and it has nothing to do with the employees. It has to do directly with leadership. That IGA agreement was put together fraudulently. And this board is acting as though 
That is a valid agreement. The citizen just came here to say, how can we, as a citizen, have a voice in the say of what the citizens want in this community? The development authority writes bonds and do a few other things. The economic development team, the employees that were snatched away from you guys, are the people the citizens need to converse with. The arrogant nature of that board over there prevents the citizens from talking to these employees, specifically me. At the end of the day, we are appointing people on this board that does not have a skill set in economic development. We have a bunch of cronies and friends that we're putting on this board that have no relationship regionally, no skill set in development, but yet we keep putting them on the board so the board becomes dysfunctional. The citizens want sit-down restaurants. It's very simple how to do. I do it every day. It's a very simple process. But we are paying top dollar for these people, and we have yet created anything that the citizens so desire. All of these splash projects are wonderful. They will automatically hit the budget because we got to employ people to run them. But they are not revenue generators. Now, some of you in the election season would taunt those as revenue generators and economic development, but it's not. So at the end of the day, the private sector and the public needs to come together to come up with a plan that works instead of we addressing the egos and the arrogance of elected officials. And I'm very frustrated about it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that concludes Mr. public Chair. comment. Uh, yes. I just wanted to uh, correct something. The yes, Youth Commission, they were represented at that meeting that uh, Mr. Farmer talked about. I know they stay really busy um, <clears throat> doing a lot of things, but they were at that particular event that he referenced. Just wanted to make sure. And they right do here. a wonderful job. Yes. Let's give our Youth Commissioners a round of applause. <laughs> All right, Madam Clerk, that concludes public comment. Okay, the board will now consider the consent agenda it's items 1, 2, 4 through 18, 22, and 24. All right, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner uh, Gregory. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next item is number three, which is a recommendation for award and approval of contract PSA. 19-236 financial services for Clayton County. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. This is for a recommendation of award for a professional service agreement, 19-236. It is financial services for Clayton County, Georgia. The recommendation is to award a professional service agreement to Piper Joffrey and Company, located in Atlanta, Georgia, in the amount of $250 per hour. Funding is available through the Finance Department's Professional Service Grant Fund. The Department Recommendation Memo and Agreement are attached for your review and information. My request is for you to approve the recommendation, authorize the Chairman or his designee to execute all necessary documents to accomplish the intent of the contract, and authorize the Chief Financial Officer to amend the budget accordingly. All right, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Probably moving to second. Any questions? Um, not really a question, but I did ask for it to be pulled. Um, as I was reviewing and um, just taking note of what we approved, most recently we also approved an additional $150,000, I believe, to be utilized even in the um, HR department. And as I've always stated, I have a concern with having staff members who are paid to do various jobs, but we're constantly having to pay for uh, consulting services or financial services or additional services. Um, and that's just my only concern. It's more of a statement than a concern, and I just want to be able to vote on it. Any other comments? I just statements? think there's a better way that we could do it. Any other comments or statements? 
Chairman, don't, before don't. you vote, I'd like to make a correction. Um, yes. The funding sources for general fund, and I think I had uh, finance departments, professional service, but it's just general fund for general the fund. Yes. And what's the cap of the amount that's going to be? Because it has 250 per hour, but what's the total that will be spent? It's an on call as needed contract. As needed. So, yes. because the company is the industry experts, uh, you talk about our employees, but some of them do not have that expert knowledge uh, and that's not a sly on our employees no it's not if you live and work and breathe a certain area of financial services then I trust that to that to I leave that to those people to give us sound advice uh, but that comes out of call sometimes and um, I just want to make sure it comes out clearly because I don't want the impression to go out that you just stated that it's a slight to employees that's not it the only thing I'm looking at is how we're spending our money and are we spending it wisely, or is there just a better way that we can look at accomplishing the same goal? And so for me, my comfort level, um, again, just looking at what we've already approved, now it's coming back again, and even at the end of the beginning of, beginning of this year, we had to approve some additional consulting services because of some other things going on. And for me, it has nothing to do with the ability of the employees. Um, I just have concern about having to go back and spend uncapped dollars because this is as needed, so it does not have a cap. I just think that we could find a better way to accomplish the same goal for my personal comfort level and my one vote. Simple as that. Any other comments? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Four, one, and pass. What's next? Okay. The next item is item number 19, ordinance 2019-143. Good evening, Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners. I have um, ordinance 2019-143, which is an ordinance to amend the Code of Clayton County, Georgia, as amended specifically Code of Clayton County, Georgia, Part 1, Chapter 62, Offenses and Miscellaneous Provisions, Article 2, Quality of Life Code, Subsection 62-204 to modify the locations where recreational and commercial vehicles may be parked, to repeal conflicting laws or ordinances and resolutions to provide severability, to provide an effective date and for other purposes. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, before we take a vote, can we have Mr. G.K. to just explain a little bit about what this ordinance does? And it's just for public record, because this is something citizens have been asking for quite a while. Mr. G.K. <coughs> Madam Chairman and Commissioners, <coughs> uh, good evening. Good evening. This ordinance is an attempt to regulate illegal truck parking in either abandoned commercial sites or some of the our commercial sites. We currently have an ordinance to regulate parking of tractor trailers in the re residential area, but we don't have one in the commercial areas. We have been inundated with complaints from citizens about truck parking in vacant lots that are commercial. So this, uh, and so far, um, all the calls we've gotten, we weren't able to cite them because we didn't have any laws to back up the citation. So this law, this amendment, allows us to be able to cite um, those trucks and ensure that trucks are not parking in vacant lots. As you know, we currently have um, commercial trailer parking lots. The applications are coming and some of them we are approving. So we do have those lots for them to use. So that is the reason for this, to manage the nuisance, if you will, that us heavy trucks are causing in our neighborhoods and also in our abandoned commercial sites. Thank you, sir. So basically, the closed down Waffle Houses, the closed down CVS stations, uh, the trucks that park there, would, they can get cited if they park it, there now. If, uh, yes, if, Mr. If Chairman. the ordinance passes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have a, I have a so. question. Um, what if um, a truck, those 18 wheelers, park at a, a gas station or whatever that's open? and for a number of days. Was, is that included in this um, ordinance? 
as long as it has some t some business to do with the gas station mm -hmm. that it can. The issue is since we have commercial truck parking in our ordinance and there are places where we have those, we don't want those businesses to become an ISO mm -hmm. where you have trucks parked. The reason is it doesn't give the county good aesthetics where you come to a business, you have all those commercial trucks parked all over the place. And this ordinance addresses abandoned yes. locations. Yes. Oh. So if there is an open store and that person is acting with uh, permission from the store owner, there's nothing we can do about that. But this specifically addresses abandoned. Yeah, this is abandoned and it addresses in such a way that the truck that needs to be parked on, on a property has to be doing business with that property. I got you. Say, for example, a truck comes in at 10 p.m. and doesn't have an, anyone to offload the um, to offload the loads, then yeah, they can stay there till the next day to offload the loads. So we're trying to figure out a way to clean up the what we're seeing right now in terms of truck appearance in the county. All right. With that being said, is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Right. Probably moved and second. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, it's unanimous. Next. The next item is item number 20, resolution 2019 144. Uh, I believe it's 21. It's 20. Oh, it's 21. Yes. Uh, I have resolution 2019 145, which is a resolution it's to initiate. It's 20. Commission Hamlet pulled 20 and 21. 20 and 21. <laughs> So take, 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 take them together. together. Take them together, please. Uh, I have resolution 2019-144, which is a resolution to initiate <coughs> a map amendment in the Mountain View Overlay District to exclude certain parcels in the Overlay District to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes. I also have resolution 2019-145, which is a resolution to initiate a text amendment to the zoning ordinance and to modify the zoning map accordingly to create the Mountain View Industrial Park Overlay District to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes. Uh, is there a motion? Well, before the motion, please, I yes. just want to make, make a statement. Uh, on last week, we met with the uh, Development Authority and all the, uh, I guess, a com combination or combined meeting or whatever. But anyway, uh, at that meeting, we decided to have our COO and our director of development, I mean, uh, economic development, get together and come up with some ideas and all of how we can work better together. I have since found out that um, the county office staff did work with um, our economic development director on this, which is really good. But what I would like for us to do is to add this to that list of things that we would like to do that economic development will get copies of our zoning, whatever zonings that are presented to us at a meeting or before meetings or whatever, so they can let us know if they have plans for those locations and all, because my concern with this one was, is this um, going to affect what the Development Authority or Economic Development Office is doing with the uh, Mountain View area? And I found out that it is not, and also I'm fine with it, but I did want to add that to the list. Is a motion. So moved. Is there a second? I'll suck it. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Yeah, Ron I do. Davis. Okay, is that to, a motion to add it to the list? No, no, the motion is on, on, on the item right. side, right. 2021. Right. She just made a statement on the uh, right. okay. working right. together. So who made the motion? I moved the motion. Warner. Thank you. I made the second. Thank you. When we had the joint meeting, I thought we kind of developed what the scope of their work effort was going to be. Is this expanding the scope? And if we are expanding the scope, don't we need their approval to do that? This motion, this this motion, the, what she, Commissioner mm -hmm. Hambrick, stated was this a comment uh, about them getting our ordinances. The only the only thing that I disagree with her on is uh, we should come up with collective vision, not to see if it fits in their vision and then you know, go a different direction if they don't agree. I think the vision should be collective mm -hmm. and then we move together as a county. Uh, but what we're voting on is 
the resolution uh, 44A and 45A. Correct. Any other questions? All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Oppose. Nay. 4 1, it passes. Next. The next is our zoning A. REZ 19060022. The applicant is requesting to rezone MX and MX1 for an event center. Mr. Chairman, we'd like to pull a D up after that because I was told that A D goes with A. I'm sorry, you lost me. <laughs> the uh, agenda item A and agenda item D are companion cases. Okay. And we'll sound them together. The uh, first case number as we're sounding is REZ 1906022. The applicant. Uh, uh, I'll sound the first one and, and give you the recommendation, and then I'll sound the second one and give you that recommendation, and then we can take the vote on each one of those. So I'm, I'm saying I'm sounding them together, I'm just sounding them consecutively, but we'll give our vote individually on A and on D. But you're going to read them together. Right. Well, yes, I read them out together. Uh, we, no, you can't do that because you got to have a public hearing on each. Exactly. Right, right. I read them out separately, and then I give you the recommendation on on the first one, which is a rezoning, and then on D, it's a it's a CUP. I'll read that and give you the recommendation on the CUP, and from that point, we, I think we can open the public hearing. Let's keep it real simple. Just read A. Let's have a hearing, and then let's do D. Thank and you. Have a hearing. I can do that. First item A, REZ 1906022, the applicant's requesting to rezone the subject property to MXI, which is mixed use commercial industrial, to allow a special event facility as a conditional use permit. The MXI zoning district is intended for a mixture of commercial and office and light industrial uses, as well as recreational uses. The proposed location is located at 521 Flint Trail. The parcel ID is referenced, on the is referenced in the uh, zoning ca uh, case. Staff recommendation is for denial. The zoning advisory group recommendation is also for denial. Okay, is the applicant present? Please come forward. Okay, if you'd like to have any statements, we'll take that at this time and if you want to reserve a couple of minutes for a rebuttal, any rebuttal at the end, uh, let me know how many minutes you would like to take at this time. Well, how many minutes do we have left? Usually they go on rate to spend two. <clears throat> two uh, minutes to save. You'll have, you'll have uh, eight minutes to speak or less. And then those in favor of it will come up and, and uh, speak for whatever time you have remaining. Okay. So, Mr. Commissioner, Chair. Uh, Good, afternoon. Good evening. And please state your name. And my name is Alex Gunty, and uh, this is my wife, Tyler Gunty. And we are here uh, on a proposal to have this event center at the uh, uh, location I was just read. Uh, <clears throat> we are transferring our business from a previous location in, in the city of Jonesboro to this present location. Uh, we purchased this building uh, on the 24th of January, and uh, we made an application to have it uh, converted into an event center. Sorry for my voice. <clears throat> but uh, we've uh, gone through all of the processes and uh, to the T, we were told by the uh, development uh, board to go through this process and have the <coughs> rezoning uh, done. The last meeting we came here and uh, we had uh, this hearing uh, postponed. But today we want to present our case to you so that uh, it can be something that you can look at whether it's going to be the, uh, something for the county and uh, the community. Okay, so. our event center, it will be run only on weekends. We have an event center previous to this, it was run only on weekends, and people might take event center as all Please about try to talk more into the People microphone. might take event center as all about parties, but we do have celebration, like uh, Independence Day from our country, we have repass, we have or veteran or, or celebration, we could do a lot of stuff. It's not just for parties. And the, the event is a good business to do. The location is even a better location, but what they are telling us, the zoning is not right. 
if the zoning is not right, what do you expect us to do? Or what can you do for us, for us to be able to run our business or to get our business running? We have the right business, we have the right location, but as you guys said, the zoning is not right. Can it be referred to some other zoning that would be able to open a business center? Because we're going to at least hire some people, you know, instead of the business being abandoned right now, the building is abandoned, nothing is happening. But we're going to change it around, make it to look appealing to the county, going to, you know, make it be okay. So we are asking you guys, what do you, what do you actually want us to do? We are waiting to do it to get our business started. We invested a lot in this place. It's been there for about 11 months. So we are asking you guys to please see or tell us what we can do to get this business started. To zone it, whatever necessary to get it started. So <clears throat> we saw that uh, there was a recommendation with the diet on the, uh, the zoning. And what we are trying to do, what she was saying in effect, is that what kind of a zoning or what kind of a recommendation can you give us to have that zoning done so that uh, the event center can be done over? What I see that uh, event center was not precluded from it, but it was not added onto that zoning. Mm -hmm. And what I see going on around that area is almost the same thing. We have gathering of uh, people within uh, the Hooters. We have uh, gas stations over there. We do have a daycare center as well within that same vicinity. It's just building beef to that, uh, those two building structures. So we want to know what can we do, uh, appealing to your human side, what can we do so that we can have a building sitting over there and just wasting away. And if it would be run when the daycare is closed only on weekends, as we always do, only on weekends. So I don't think it would interfere with the daycare because we are the owners for both buildings. We want to invest. We've been investing in Clayton County for <coughs> years. We have other daycares, you know. We, we, we really work in Clayton County, so we are, we are actually appealing to you guys. Tell us what we need to do to bring in more business in Clayton County. So that's all we're asking you guys to do for us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody, anybody here who would like to speak in favor of this request? Anybody here like to speak in favor of the request? Mr. Chairman, I, I, my speaking is not for or against. I, I'm offering a solution. To this if you want to make a statement, sir, you need to come take the, the podium. Yes. May, I, yes. may I approach the podium? Yes. Mickey Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. This is a fine example of the inconsistencies in the boards that we have and the zoning that we have. And from what I see here, these are some fine people who want to get a business started in Clayton County. However, the way the zoning is for, for them is that your, your boards, both boards have denied them for whatever reason. Now the solution here is to direct these people to the Economic Development Authority to find a way to trade their piece of property that they put money and time into, into a piece of property that will be consistent with our zoning and, and work areas. That's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, anybody else? All right, hearing none, is there anyone here who want to speak in opposition to it? Anyone would like to speak in opposition? All right, hearing no one, Commissioner Davis. Actually, I think Mr. Garber is actually on to something here, but I think the inconsistency is with the zoning. Um, we have exhibited a lot of spot zoning in the past, mm -hmm. and I believe that it needs to cease. It has nothing to do with the event center 
But what we need to do is to keep some consistency around here if, or in order to take this county forward. And what I'm actually recommending is denial of the zoning. If not, we're going to go into this situation and have to deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis, and we don't want to do that. All right, the motion is denied. Is there a second? Uh -uh. I'll second the motion. Any questions? Yes. Um, I agree with you, Commissioner Davis, definitely. But also, I believe what the issue is that's at hand of the board is what has come before us over and over again. And as Commissioner Hambrick even stated, we had a meeting with the Economic Development Board. And it was a little bit disheartening for me to sit and hear <coughs> when it was posed a question about vision from that board and being consistent with this board. We all know that at the end of the year, last year, as everybody has alluded to and spoke about, that there were some things pushed through at the end of the year. And that's really what's causing a lot of your issues. Number one is the fact that for years, regardless of who has sat in this seat, there has been inconsistency in the development authority and their ability to be able to push things through and both boards being able to buy into a strategic plan and vision collectively for this county. So I do agree with the fact that we don't need to have any more spot zoning. But I also pose back to you, Mr. Chairman, as I did when I dealt with issues in the panhandle, that we need to do, needed to look back at everything that was approved at the end of the year, because we know that was problematic. We know that in the manner in which it was done, it was problematic. And there were even some possible questions surrounding ethics and even possible legalities, which has led us to where we are today. Uh, what I mean by that is we allow outgoing folks that were on this board to vote collectively to bind this board over. But this board that's here now had an opportunity to go back and revisit every one of these. And so I don't know that I can support denial, but I can say this. It's time for us to get it right. It's time for us to come on the same page. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is another reason why I had it changed even for the legal body at the end, because we know there's one person that has allowed, there's a couple people that have allowed this to perpetuate, and unfortunately, you're caught in the middle. And I apologize as a commissioner for that. Sure. But I've asked for us to address this in writing, and I've, I've asked verbally over and over again. Any other comments, statements? All right, those in favor, aye. 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 She Hold on, we're, we're in the middle of a motion, ma'am. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. For one, it passes. Uh, I'll allow you to make us a comment or a statement if you want to say something right quick. No, okay, thank you. I understood. Right. Next. Are we going to do Part D. Com com companion three. case CUP 1908-0030. The applicant's requesting a conditional use permit to allow the conversion of, a, of an existing commercial building into a special event center. The property is located at 521 Flint Trail. Parcel ID is referenced on the, uh, on the zoning report. Staff recommendation is for denial. And zone, zoning advisory group recommendation is for denial. Now, since this is really a mute point, we still need to go through the public hearing. All right, well, with that being said, will the applicants come? No, we don't have to have well, yes, no. Okay. They can decide whether they want to speak again on it or they don't have to, but we really have. With applicants, uh, do you want to speak again on this matter? Although it's been turned down, likelihood is not going. Yeah. Come, on. Come up to the mic, ma'am. I know you guys are denying it, but you prefer an abandoned building for somebody to invest in it? Is that what we want to do in Clayton County, or abandoned building, then to be invested in it and hire people? Is that what you guys want? Is that what we're working towards? If that is, I rest my case. Any other statements? 
All right, so are y'all foregoing this uh, public mm -hmm. hearing, ma'am? No. no, they're not foregoing. Oh. They made their statement, then we just call people. Okay, anybody here for or against it? Anybody for it? Anybody against it? Commissioner Davis. What I'd like to do, and it goes back to what we stated before with the zoning. We also have some conditional use issues. I've spoken to uh, Ms. Spann and Mr. Njike about this. I would like to table this issue that they ha or this. Um, this companion this, case, we this, can't yes. table one without the other. You should, you had to How come we can't table, table You had to table the other one. We, they're, they're two separate ones. So why, how come we Ms. can't Spann, table? can one be, can we pass one or table one without the other? They're, they're uh, actually companion cases. I, when Commissioner Davis and I had a conversation, we discussed the uh, issues and problems with the MXI zoning, and I uh, think we've acknowledged that tonight. Uh, there were some conversations about some potential uh, ordinance amendments that could perhaps address or clarify where these type of facilities actually should go, what zoning district they should actually be located in. So the current uh, application for rezoning on a CUP, they, they do have to go hand in hand. So. Uh, if we deny one, we need to deny both. And if and uh, there's no point in really tabling them at this point because if we do consider a text amendment, the text amendment could come back in a different in a different fashion or a different district. So uh, the cases as they stand right now, uh, as a companion, they they both pretty much have to have the same recommendation because you can't do a CUP without the rezoning. Well, I mean, I understand that it cannot. An event center cannot go in an MX. It has to be zoned MXI. That's correct. So in, in other words, it's a moot point to go with it. But if we don't address conditional use permitting in the county, then we're, de we're denying them the ability to create an event center in a reasonable amount of time. Because if we deny, they can't come back before us for how long? A year. If we change the conditional use or begin to modify it, we've now penalized them and us to, to do it. it the, I understand where you come from, Commissioner, and, that, and that you, that's a very good point taken. It may make sense if we're discussing tabling to table both items, address whether or not there is any, any reason or legitimacy for a text amendment because the text amendment will tell us whether or not we want to consider MXI with additional standards or whether we want to con consider another zoning district. But you, you, you made a good point that the zoning actions on this property could be binding to a point that once we do do a text amendment, they'll have limitations on, on what they can come back as. So if there is some, some uh, considerations for a, a, a text amendment, then perhaps a tabling is a better option so that we could iron out which direction we think the code should actually go. But, we, but we've just voted on something. We can't go back and table that. You can we? Sure. And I guess the other well, question would be for me. You can. Go ahead. I would, I would <coughs> if I could, Mr. Chair, listening to what you're asking, it sounds like you want us to reconsider the vote to hold the item is what you're asking. Well, and it I, was for that, that, that one motion legal. because of the zoning. We, we want to. Uh, begin to stick with a premise that we are not going to spot zone in the community, one. Two, because we've done that, they're not allowed to have an event center in the current zoning. I understand. But it's not the event center that we have the issue with, it's the zoning issue. Unless we're gonna deny this but make some kind of amendment to where if we do change that they're allowed to come back, uh, that's immediately you say we can address that through a tax amendment yes we could address the uh, the district in which a where we could address the district where we think a special event center is mostly more appropriate if we think the MXI district is too intrusive then we're going to we're continually going to run into the same issue whenever they uh, want to appear on a commercial quarter where everything is primarily a, a strip commercial and we're introducing a, a, a industrial type component so a text amendment, uh, not knowing what shape or form that the text amendment may end up in is, <coughs> is the uncertainty at this time. So having a zoning action on this property could be binding 
Uh, or it could not be because the text amendment could come back and it'd be dealing with the whole, it could be, it could work out where it, zoning's not even needed. But we don't know that at this point. So in order to keep the zoning from being binding, uh, and I think that the recommendation of legal, I would suspect that if the, t we table the, the rezoning, that gives us opportunity to, to do research, come back with a text amendment to the board so the board could determine which is the, uh, uh, the appropriate way to address these event facilities. I have a question, if you don't mind. What if, hypothetically, these business owners or another business owner came in and said, I want to run a restaurant which allows for events to take place. All restaurants have space for events. And the reason I'm asking this, just recently I drove all the way to Duluth for an event and there was restaurants there there are, and there was room for an event. Um, is that something that can be considered under the current zoning uh, or not? That's uh, probably already permitted, permitted activity, a restaurant being a primary use could have an accessory type activities or accessory function underneath that umbrella as, as a restaurant. So they could have events under an active restaurant. In this case, when we have a facility that's, that's set aside to be just an event center, it's, it's in conflict. And what is the difference? Is it because it requires the grease trap and all of that versus an event center does not? What would be the difference? It, it's uh, it's just the basic the basic way the code works. I mean, you have primary uses. Certain things go with primary uses, especially event center as a primary use. The issue we uh, had with it in the uh, industrial areas is that we were creating a gathering place within an industrial environment, so we needed to create a conditional use permit to evaluate it for that district. When when we look at it in a commercial environment, the the opinion or approach may be different because now we're dealing with an area that's, that's commercial where you have traffic that's moving throughout, <coughs> throughout different hours of the day. So uh, the difference is primary use versus accessory, especially events for center is a primary use, and as it stands right now, only allowed in an MXI district, and a restaurant, of course, is allowed in most commercial districts, and they can have activities underneath that, that uh, operational uh, standards. Mr. Chair, so considering that, if I may, we all, un I, at least I understand that at the end of the year when all this zoning was created, I got numerous phone calls from those in the industry asking us what were we doing. There were some inconsistencies in the zoning that was approved, okay? So with that being stated, would we be able to entertain for the board to revisit the previous vote, at least to go back and have conversations about this particular matter as we move forward to finally work to correct this zoning? and to make it consistent. Mr. Reed, let me go back before answering the commissioner's question. Uh, commissioner uh, Davis, you asked uh, about the tabling of this matter. Because the CUP is not a zoning issue, if you decided to amend MX so that these would be available under a conditional use permit, they would not be barred by a year um, because that's not a zoning Conditional okay. use permit is not a zoning mm -hmm. decision. Going to your your question as to whether we, you want to revisit the other uh, item, you can make a motion to reconsider the other, or, or I'm sorry, make a motion to reconsider the denial of that other item, and then if it's a majority board, you can go back and make another motion to table it. If, the, if you get a majority <coughs> to say that yes, we want to go back and revisit that item, you can you can undo it in that but matter. Doesn't it have to come from the positive vote, the, the majority of the vote to propose the revisiting? Is that not the accurate? Made the motion, yes. Correct. So has to has to right. make a motion to reconsider. Correct. Okay, that's what I was asking. Right. Majority, the majority exactly. of the vote. I apologize. Majority of the vote. That's what I meant to say. Majority. Okay, I thought that was the case. All right. So what's your pleasure, let me, Mr. Let me ask Davis. one more question then. Because if we denied, and they're still allowed to, if we change the zoning, and they're allowed to come in, they'd still have to pay another fee, mm -hmm. permitting fee, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So then, yes, I want to move that we reconsider the previous motion. All right, the motion on the floor is to uh, reconsider previous motion on REZ 1906 dash zero zero two two is there a second and I'm gonna suck in that motion as before any other discussion on it all right those in favor aye aye, aye. opposed is unanimous 
now, and I guess if we have you to. Want it, yes, we have to will call. They, come will back. The applicants come back up. While they are coming, I, I would like to make. Uh, no, but we have to ask for their consent yeah. to take. I would like to make a statement. Uh, it has been mentioned a couple times of regarding zoning that was done at the end of the year with a previous board. The first of 2019, all the commissioners were given. I think I've mentioned this before. All the commissioners were given uh, a chance of any zoning in our district to be changed or whatever. So whatever was done at the end of 2018, had, there was a chance for everybody, each commissioner, to correct that. So I just want to put that out there again. I think I said that before. So we keep referring back to what happened in 2018. That could have been corrected, and it still can be corrected, but it was uh, a chance for each commissioner to correct that early 2019. And I asked for it to be corrected in 2019. All right, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Davis. We just get your approval to table both of these matters. OK. Uh, commissioners, I want to thank you for your consideration to table those issues. Now, do you understand what you're agreeing to? Yes. OK. okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Davis, we need to give a specific date when to bring it back, correct? I'd like to bring it back once. Well, it's kind of conditional because we need to meet to figure out the zoning uh, and the special use permit. Like zoning so I'm hoping, uh, Mr. NGK and Ms. Spann, when do you think we could visit this and have it somewhat rectified? Uh, we'll be happy to get right on uh, doing it, doing some drafting of some potential language, and then we could sit down and meet uh, perhaps on next week to discuss a potential uh, direction of the uh, amendment. The uh, probability for uh, getting on an agenda could either be the January or the February agenda. I guess if I uh, wanted to allow us ample time to, to draft an amendment and have it initiated and put it back on the board agenda, it, it may put us in the cycle of uh, February. So February 18th yeah. could be the board date. So 90 days. So the, but <coughs> the text amendment would come back to you, could potentially come back, um, could potentially come come back in, uh, in February. <coughs> Commissioner, I, so that staff is clear. What specifically is the direction of the board? And that will be the that will be the, the guide to give them the date for when this can come back to the board. Because a lot of it is contingent upon advertisement, but they need to know specifically what is the direction of the board so then they can tell you the date for which might be certain. So we need to get direction from the board first, specifically what you're asking staff to do. Well, we need staff to go re to go visit the zoning and also the special use permits. So at this point, um, a 90 days. I think a 90 day table would, would put us on give us uh, ample time on the calendar to get the text amendment before you, and to bring back the the case to bring back a uh, re-advertise. Uh, items for them based on the new text amendment, how it was drafted and adopted. And for clarification purposes, you're asking to table item A and D? A and D, correct. Okay, is that your that is To a certain day, what that day April, is? April, what's the meeting date in April? Miss Spann, what's the meeting day in April? Uh, I don't have an exact date, but it will be t potentially around April. Now we need April. an exact date. All right, your motion, Commissioner Davis. Your motion to table. <laughs> <laughs> your, mo your motion to table to the board first. I move that we table A and D and to bring their, mo their case back for the April 21st, or, yes. Do they agree Some to that? Yes. Before you, before you. They agree to it. Yes, we um, yes, do okay. okay, thank you. Okay. All right, I'll suck in the motion. Oh, did you? No, it's been sucking by Commissioner uh, Franklin Warner. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Did we vote? No, we didn't vote yet. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. Next item on the agenda, uh, item B, BOC 
a request for a conditional use permit. The applicant, Emily Flood, is requesting a conditional use permit to develop a 60,200 square foot single story climate controlled interior access self storage facility. This self storage facility is an expansion of an existing mini storage facility that has the, out, the outside access. The proposed location is located at 5979 Old Dixie Highway. The parcel ID numbers are further described in the staff report and on the agenda. The subject property is currently zoned general business. The property is approximately 3.44 acres of acres of land and has 755 feet of frontage on Old Dixie Highway. Staff recommendation is for approval, conditional. The zoning advisory group recommendation is for approval, conditional. All right, are the applicants here? Please come forward. State your name and who you represent. Good evening. My name is Mike Bailey, and I'm 4085 Wildberry Lane, Cumming, Georgia, and I work for public storage in the real estate department, and I'm here to represent the company. You want to leave any minutes for a rebuttal? Uh, yes, sir. Maybe just two minutes for an introduction and <laughs> balance of the time. Two minutes. You got it, sir. Okay. Thank you. Please uh, proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, good evening. Thank you for entertaining this conditional use permit. Um, as you know, this property uh, has been an existing self-storage facility since the early 90s, and uh, we own the balance of the land that is undeveloped there on the, the right-hand side of the screen, and we, we seek to um, build a new uh, facility next to the existing use, which would be a modern uh, climate-controlled building with interior access it would effectively screen out the, the garage style roll up doors that are in the back of the property and uh, provide our customers with uh, a new uh, climate controlled facility. And, uh, we're here seeking to combine those two properties as is one of the conditions and um, put a nice building out there and uh, expand this existing property, this existing business. Okay, thank you. Anybody would like to speak in favor of this request? Anyone would like to speak in favor of it? I'd like to speak, sir. Come forward, sir. <coughs> Mickey Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. From reading the, the request and seeing what property, what buildings are already there, I see that this facility fits within the zoning and along with the recommendations of the other boards that approve, I as a citizen of, of Clayton County also approve the zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone would like to speak in opposition to it? Come forward, please. Good evening, thank you. This is actually in my community, and next to it is a gas station, an apartment complex. Teacher, that's me. Oh. My name is Keisha Crockett. Um, Although it may be zoned for it, I don't think it does the community well. Um, it would bring rodents in the area. I think it could be used for something different. We have a huge um, storage facility already on um, Mount Zion Boulevard, a road. Um, I think we need to get a little more creative of what we bring to our county and how it serves the community. I think restaurants or anything in that area would be great. You have the clientele over there. You have several um, apartment complexes. Um, so no, I, I don't want this in my community. We need something that is, um, we can do better. We can do better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? All right, Commissioner Hamburg. Uh, yes, Ms. Spann, will you read the... Uh, oh, wait a minute, oh. wait a minute, I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, your two-minute rebuttal. Oh, 
Would you like a rebuttal? You don't have no, to No, sir. It. I'm just here to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Okay. Will you read the uh, conditions, please? Yes. Yes, that will. Yes, yes ma'am. The subject property, uh, there are two conditions recommended by staff and supported by the zoning advisory group. The condition number one reads, the subject property shall be combined with the adjacent storage lot to the west prior to the issues of a site development permit by transportation and development. Condition number two, the, pros, the proposed building facade facing Old Dixie Highway shall include varying fenestrations or wall pop-outs every 75 feet, similar to, similar to the depiction of the, on the, of the drawing on the applicant site plan dated August 25th, 2019. Those are the two conditions recommended. Okay. Are you in agreement with those conditions? Are you? Y yes, ma'am. So the combining the two properties mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense to us as well. Um, the elevation that's on the screen there, that's uh, it's a character uh, type elevation. This, this building would not quite look like that one. That is a multi-story building. This would be a single story building. Um, and I do agree that any, any kind of long frontage should be broken up and uh, the elevation. Uh, one uh, consideration I would ask for is that um, in, in the condition, it asks for uh, physical relief <laughs> and changes in the facade and in depth. And I would ask that we would also be, get consideration for color changes or material changes along that facade and not just the, the change in depth. At this time, we have not had a particular proposal for any color, so we have not addressed any uh, particular colors for this. If there are anything that would generate uh, deviations from the code, we'd have to address that as a separate variance matter before the Board of Zoning Appeals. As it stands right now, the recommendation is just to address that building facade. If the applicant meets that, that then that's fine. But if there are some other things that's proposed that does not meet code, we'll address those through the variance procedures. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, would you like to comment on the uh, comment that was made regarding the rodents and some other things? That's where he had his rebuttal for. He passed. I'd, I'd be happy to if I'm allowed to. You had two minutes. Okay. Uh, if you would still like that's to a use question, them, go ahead. But that's okay. a question from me. From, yes. So I think he can answer. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And so, uh, as you know, right now the property <clears throat> is wooded and has a lot of brush. Right. And, and as we go in and develop the property, actually we see that as an opportunity to remove rodents. And I, I've been on that part of the property several times and um, I don't go out there without snake boots. <laughs> so we, we see a fully developed property as a chance to go ahead and actually remove the ro rodents and snakes that are there. Okay. With that, Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval. Is there a second? A second, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? <laughs> Right. Yes, with approval conditions. with conditions, yes. No, just a quick statement. I know that in the past, um, this board honors, I guess, what you call district recommendations, and I do appreciate it. Um, but at the end of the day, as an individual person, I have to agree, we need more than storage. That's all. Any other questions? All right, those in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Nay. 4 1, it passes. Thank you. Next. Uh, item C on the agenda CUP 1908 0029. The applicant, Alfred E. Zachary, is requesting a conditional use permit within the general business, business district for a place of worship. The subject property is located at 2631 Mount Zion Road, Jonesboro, Georgia. The parcel ID is identified on the agenda. Subject property has five acres of land and has, <coughs> has approximately 192 feet of frontage along Mount Zion Road. The proposal for the place of worship, there's an existing place of worship. The proposal here is to expand of, of a, a building on the property to expand their sanctuary area. Staff recommendation. The staff recommendation is for approval. The uh, zoning advisory group recommendation is also for approval. Okay, is the applicant here? Please state your name. Alfred Zachary. And yes. any number of minutes you would like to reserve for rebuttal? I can reserve them all. 
I need a number. You get 10, we do 10 minutes total. So ten usually minutes. you're going to take all 10 minutes. You're not going to let anybody speak in, in favor. No, no, no. I'll, I'll reserve the 10 minutes. No, you only get 10 minutes total. Oh, well, I'll reserve five minutes. Five minutes. I don't have that much to say in reference to it. I'd just like to say, first of all, that I'm a, a longtime citizen of Clayton County. I've been here for about 35 years. And uh, <clears throat> we just decided, and I've done some development in the past in Clayton County, residential uh, investment and development, but uh, we, uh, now for, let me just say for the record that I, uh, <clears throat> me being a longtime citizen of Clayton County, uh, I've been through a lot of changes personally with the, uh, as we've heard already in the past about the mixed use development inconsistencies and some of the things that we're facing here and the challenges that we're facing. And I think it uh, would behoove us to uh, certainly, if we want to attract the kind of uh, businesses that we are contemplating and wanting to or desiring to have in the, in the county, I think we need to uh, certainly address uh, the morality that's in the county right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, uh, one of the problems that we have is that <coughs> the desirability of you know, certain people wanting to live in or relocate to Clayton County is just not there. It's just not that high. Uh, my brother, for example, is purchasing a house off of Panhandle, and that particular portion of Panhandle is uh, Hampton. He thought that he was going to be in Henry County. Mm -hmm. He thought it was uh, Hampton, but he's found out that it was Clayton County. He said, man, I, when I was talking to him, he said, man, I never thought I'd be moving to Clayton County. I said, well, it's not as bad as you think, but there's a perception that is there that needs to be addressed. And if we're going to attract, attract uh, businesses and uh, desirable development in Clayton County, and again, I've been here for 35 years. I've seen a lot of changes, but there's a, a lot of work that needs to be done, and I think it begins with uh, addressing the uh, perception that we have that this is not a safe place to live, it's not a good place to live. I personally disagree. I think it is, but again, once the perception is there, it becomes a lot of people's reality, and certainly uh, I would hope that we can do our part to address that and make it better for the, for the county as a whole. That's my position. Thank you. Anybody want to speak in favor of this request? Anyone like to speak in favor of the request? Anyone in opposition? Anybody opposed? Commissioner Gregor. All right. Okay, Mrs. Zach. Right? <laughs> You're going to make everything, make people want to move here with your charge and everything, right? Well, um, um, Sir, I don't, I, I'm just making a I joke, understand. I didn't ask for it, but anyway, um, I'm going to go along with the, uh, first of all, let me ask a question, Ms. Spain. This building that's currently on that property, are they allowed to hold services? It, you know, what type of structure is it now? Is it a house? Is it a whatever? Are they allowed to have services? I'm asking Ms. Spain. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Existing house on the on the property that the, the church has been using for a place of worship. I understand they've been there prior to to the requirements for a condition use permit. The fact that now that they're intended to expand the facility, it triggers the conditional use permit uh, public hearings. The building to <coughs> the building area <coughs> off right in the area of the parking. Mm -hmm. That's the building that's been expanded and converted. It's an ex existing accessory building but it's, been, it's being converted into a seating area, the sanctuary area. So all of the uh, church uh, meeting uh, worship services will be taking place in that building, and the house will be an auxiliary use for the church. Okay, thank you. And, and, um, that, and that there are two uh, recommended conditions that I could, I could read into the record right. whenever you like. Yeah, I see those conditions. Yeah, please read them. Okay. 
On condition number one, uh, the request is, to, is conditioned upon successful petition to the Zoning <coughs> Board of Appeals to vary from section 6.13 place of worship regarding the minimum road frontage lot width of 200 feet, allowing the lot frontage to be at 193 feet. Condition number two, comply with the parking surface and landscape requirements per section 6.32 and 6.34 of the uh, zoning code. The, I will state that the applicant has a, a pending, pending the results of this conditional use permit application has to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to address the frontage issue. The code requires a uh, <coughs> place of worship to be on property that has a minimum of 200 feet. This particular lot is an existing lot and is shy seven feet of having that 200 feet. So before uh, development activity is approved for construction, they'd actually have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to get a variance on that frontage issue as well as uh, address any, if there's any uh, deviations from the, the parking uh, landscaping requirements that would also have to be addressed by the, by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Does this, if this CUP is uh, approved and then if they go before ZAG, I mean the appeals BZA. board, would this trigger that <coughs> sidewalk where they'd be responsible for putting in the sidewalk near that area, seeing that there's a structure already there? Yes, yes, okay. the, uh, the construction of the parking area will trigger a land disturbance permit, which will tr trigger a requirements for a sidewalk along the frontage. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. Mr. Chair, with that, uh, I offer a motion to um, go along with what the ZAG recommended approval with those set conditions. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Did the applicant agree? agree oh, uh, so you agree with the uh, uh, stipulations? Yes. Okay. So I only have one statement, and I appreciate you recognizing the fact that when it comes to perception, we are not the county that people outside of the county perceives us as being. But at the same time, if we're going to change the narrative of how people perceive us or, or, or believe that who we are, then we must start with ourselves. We, we need to tell our own best story, mm -hmm. and we need to tell it to everybody because we are truly not the county and the people who live here that many people perceive us as. We're a good county. There's Absolutely. a lot of good people that lives here. Absolutely. And contrary to what people may believe, there's a lot of great things that's happening. It is. It is. Indeed. And we're rebranding as well. Mr. Yeah. Chair. And we're working through that. Definitely. Yes. And I, I do want to say I want to meet your brother because I'm the commissioner in District 3 and there's a lot of panhandle folks back there. Yes. So we welcome him to the neighborhood. Right. Oh, we have rebranding efforts going on. And so Clayton County, just like any other county, deals with some of the same things. Absolutely. But as Chairman said, we perpetuate the, the negativity. Right. We don't let anybody give us our identity. That's right. All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Oppose, it's unanimous. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Next. Agenda item, agenda item E. And agenda item G, I'll read through item E. The uh, BOC 1909-0014, request for rezoning. The applicant, Heck Walkers, is requesting a rezoning from RS 180 Residential District to RM Multifamily Residential District to allow 65 single family attached town homes to be constructed on the property. The proposed location is located at Plantation Parkway and County Line Road which is further described as, as a parcel ID that's referenced on the agenda. The subject property is approximately 11.52 acres of land and has approximately 878 feet of frontage along County Line Road. The applicant has submitted a request for withdrawals. Staff's uh, recommendation supports the withdrawal as well as the zoning advisory group supports the request for withdrawal. And then the uh, companion case is companion case G. Is the applicant here? They submitted it. They submitted it how? Yes. Through email, text? Right. With the writing that they request to withdraw and to come. All right, Commissioner Franklin Warren. We accept their withdrawal, and um, we look forward to continued conversations. That's for item G. I was found item G with the companion case. Do we need to vote on the withdrawal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, they just withdrew it. We just said, well, mm -hmm. we didn't have to accept it. You we asked good? me, so. Yeah, it's you can vote on it. Just make a motion to Yeah, let's vote. The motion's on the floor to uh, accept.
accept the withdrawal. I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, it's unanimous. Next. D do the companion case, yes. Um, we accept the application for withdrawal. That's your motion. Yes. Is there a second on the motion? I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next. Applicants here. Good evening. Good evening. Lauren Good. Clayton with Wilson Brock and Irby. It's 2849 Paces Ferry Road, Suite 700, Atlanta 30339. Any minutes for a rebuttal? I would like to reserve three minutes, please. Three? Yes. Okay. My client's name is Tri W Group. And we're seeking the conditional use permit for a Class A light industrial warehouse distribution facility. I have here with me Harrison Marsteller from Colliers International, International who's available for any questions, and my colleague, Harold Buckley. Five to 10% of this building will be attractive warehouse space in addition, uh, excuse me, office space in addition to the warehouse. And this is up near the southwest corner of Anvil Block and Grant Road, right by the Shell Station. Currently zoned MXI, it's also designated as MXI in the future land use map. And the CUP is required because the MXI incorporates light industrial uses into this classification. And light industrial requires a conditional use permit for a warehouse distribution facility. By example, under light industrial, the uses that are also permitted under MXI, you could put here uh, agricultural implementation and equipment establishments, auto engine body repair, manufacturing compounding of cell phones, paper, fur, glass, manufacturing of ceramic products, research laboratories, tractor trailer storage, and a wholesale business and trucking terminal, all of which can go there by right without a conditional use permit. Most of this property borders to the south, which is a 48-acre site of heavy industrial. And then all of the other adjacent property is MXI. Sorry about that. <laughs> So the comp plan designates Fort Gillum and also Fort Gillum East as industrial nodes. And so, you know, Fort Gillum, you've got the, the Kroger facility, but this whole area is what is considered Fort Gillum East. And nearly everything on this south side of Anvil Block Road is going to be an industrial or distribution use, and it's going to be zone MXI or industrial. A lot of that down here is heavy industrial. But just real briefly to give you sort of an idea of what we're trying to do. We think we've put together some attractive building renderings of what we anticipate being constructed there with some great landscape plans as well. And a couple more boards of different perspectives of the rendering. And so there's your office space in the front.
nighttime view. And then uh, something that's somewhat unique to this property is that it already has a lot of natural vegetation. And so the buffer from anvil block from both perspectives is going to show basically no building. So you're gonna have a significant amount of both landscape planting and existing landscape buffer there. We have one more of those. And this is from the opposite perspective, but same thing. I wanted to touch briefly upon the benefits of a facility like this. Um, from an economic development perspective, the majority of the land in Clayton County is zoned residential or agricultural, which we know produces tax deficits. The Clayton County Development Plan cited a need for a balanced relationship between industrial, commercial, and office to provide adequate Lesson. property tax and other revenue. So we've done some calculations. The current 2018 taxes are $14,000. Estimated 2020 taxes once this is constructed is 192,802. In addition to taxes, this facility will generate somewhere between 100 and 150 jobs. So just to break that down for you, you're gonna have that five to 10% of the front office space occupied by folks in IT, sales, and warehouse management. And those are all very good paying jobs. Additionally, the, the majority of the jobs, of course, will be in the warehouse space. And we estimate $15 an hour is the lowest paying job, and that's for order processing, and $17 an hour for forklift drivers. Uh, so that's the lowest paying job would be roughly 28000 a year. And then finally, as you all know, Atlanta CareerWise and Clayton State created a program to close the skills gap that was identified by Georgia Tech's Enterprise Innovation Institute. And they indicated that jobs in distribution and supply chain are one of the highest wage industries in Clayton County. And with all of those benefits being considered, I ask that you take the recommendation of staff and approve this conditional use permit. All right, thank you. Anybody here want to speak in favor of this request? Anyone like to speak in favor of it? Anyone like to speak in opposition of it? Anybody opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Gregory. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I, one of the things I told Mr. Buckley, I said, I wish we had another name instead of warehouse, because people tend to think <laughs> warehouse, they think of a smokestack, an old building, and so forth. Um, what are the, first of all, this, this area is located so near I-75. Easy access, and we, the access we have to, you know, the Port of Savannah, the airport, and also, I, I know some people complain a little bit, they say, well, those are not high paying jobs. However, those people are not going to stay at $13 and $14 forever. When the so. young lady got up earlier and talked about wanting restaurants and so forth, we have a need in this community, and that need is to put people to work. And there are, there are a lot of people who don't have that four-year degree, but we can put them to work in a matter of six <coughs> weeks or less or just a few months more. In addition to that program you talked about at Clayton State, I know Mr. Wilburn, who is over the adult education program with the Clayton County Public Schools, they have also partnered with several of these um, facilities in our county. Once the people get their GED, then they're, they're training them, they're putting them through internship programs, and this is what we need. They're not gonna start <coughs> off, guys, at a $50,000 a year job, you know. And I tell people all the time, uh, these, jo these jobs are needed so that people can build income, so that they can build credit so they can buy homes, join PTA and so forth. I tell this little joke all the time about, you know, the young people, my daughter, she'll go out every day and spend fifteen dollars at Starbucks. But you know, I'm gonna go home and use my Carrick. So we've got to try to attract more people, you know, to the county through th some of these jobs. The people who are here, we've got to put them to work. So with that, um, I offer a motion to approve this petition by the applicant. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? I yeah. do. Go ahead, Commissioner. The owners of this property, where do they reside? 
Where do the owners reside? Correct. I believe it's Ohio. Ohio. And, and also, too, I have a comment, which is, yes, we want the county to have jobs and our citizens to have jobs. But we also want our citizens that go away to college have the ability to come back home to practice. Yes, if my son or daughter is making $60,000, $80,000 a year, are they going to work in a factory or a warehouse? The answer is no. We also know that true supply chain is not through um, forklift drivers. That's not true supply chain. Um, true supply chain is within IT and the IT uh, mm -hmm. industry. So my, my, my thought is, yes, we know who we are, but we need to figure out who we want to become. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to take care <clears throat> of the people who are here now, because there are people who need these jobs. I get calls every day. You know, uh, maybe maybe it's where I live. I don't live in Lake Spot. So I get calls every day for people who say, I need a job. I need Ms. Ms. Gregory, can you help me? And again, these are needed facilities. I know it's not what everyone wants, but we've got to balance this out. And there, if you look at the stats of how many people in Clayton County do not have their GED, you will understand why we need these entry-level jobs to start off with so they can start. A, a lot of us came from blue-collar families. Yes, we did, and I don't apologize for where I live. I've worked my butt off to get where I am. And I've put my kids through school so that they can come back to do what they want to do. Um, and that's what we have to also look at. Yes, do we have, do we have a sector of, do we have a sector of the population that is working class? The answer is most definitely do have to accommodate them. The thing is just to let's begin to think holistically and let us not always think that all of Clayton County citizens are uneducated and and uh have no skill set oh, well, uh, mr and that's not what we're saying we're not saying i'm saying there is a large population that needs this that that needs these jobs but you know that's that's not we, we shouldn't be arguing about that because we got emotional absolutely because approve it. and also mr davis you approved one of these a couple of months ago mm -hmm. in your district okay this listen district. we know that everybody's not going to college and and we are a young county uh, made up of a lo lot of young uh, people. So again, there is a need for, th for these jobs as well as top level jobs. My question is, just for clarification purposes, the tree lines will be obscuring the view of the- From Anvil Block, yeah. From Anvil Block. So you won't be able to see the warehouse from the roadway. That's right. How many, if any, I, I can't tell. It doesn't look like there are any subdivisions around the development. There might be a couple of homes, but uh, are these homes where number three is? Three of the four homes are marketed for sale and we believe to be vacant. And then there's one home that's not marketed for sale and we do not know if there's an occupant. Have y'all spoken to those people that was in that house? That is a good question. Okay. We, we have not. You have not? We have not. All right, any other questions? I just want to say that I respect the, um, the debate. I think it's positive. People need to know we don't all think the same. I respect both commissioners. But I think that, too, we need to keep in perspective the narrative of both sides. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I've mentioned is, yes, we need to supply jobs with folks that are here. But we also need to, as, Mr. as, a, um, as the other commissioner stated, attract those that want to come back home. So my only statement is, please, please, if it was approved, don't just offer the low-end jobs and then you bust, you bring everybody else in from up north. I will tell you that this has become a problem throughout not just Clayton County, but the region. And we are having issues with congestion and traffic because I concur with you, Mr. Davis. One of the reasons that I was no longer a practice account, accountant is because I got tired of driving all the way up north. That was the only place I could find another job as an accountant. I left the profession then because I wanted to be close to my family. So I do concur with you on that. I think that we do have to make sure we clear up the narrative because it is not all what we know warehouses to be of old, but we do need to have companies like yourself go out and get other companies that are gonna come in and offer higher paying wages as well. Thank you. Anything else? All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.
this item is the appointment library. of the board. All right. Appointment to the library board uh, to replace Randy Muff, Muff who, re who resigned. Mm -hmm. All right, it's the replacement is to the appointments to the library, library board who resigned on October 8th, 2019. Term is to begin immediately and will expire on May 21st, 2022. Any recommendations? No recommendations. Everybody on the board. All right, we'll hold it till next meeting. Oh. Is there a need for executive session? Yes, Mr. Chair, on litigation and personnel. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Hold on. Real quick. Okay, go ahead. Is there an age requirement on that board? On which board? Library board. Got to be as, uh, I couldn't. Is there an age requirement on the uh, for any any board, especially in particular? The, uh, the library, library board. Because it's all adults. Why couldn't we put one of our teens on that board? Could we do that? Is that legal? We look into that and see. I would. You don't know if it would be good. I think that they use the library. Well, they do. <laughs> but they don't. And they can them. work. Can they go with working age? I'll look at that and I'll get an answer back they to you. They meet sometimes around the day in school. It's problematic. I just, you got retreats and I'm just thinking innovatively. All right. Executive session for litigation and real estate. Personnel. I mean personnel. Litigation personnel. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. A bill on a rock. <laughs> All right. Motion to reconvene. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Ms. Reed. I have uh, three uh, settlement agreements. Please take them together. Okay. First is an agreement in the matter of Robin L. Saxon versus William T. Simmons uh, related to a lawsuit involving a permanent, her appointment as permanent process server uh, for the Superior and State Courts in Clayton County for the 2019 in the amount of um, $5,000. The next is a settlement agreement in the matter of Lawrence Dwayne Harris versus Officer M. Berry et al. <coughs> um, relating from um, Lawrence Dunbar's, Lawrence Dwayne Harris's arrest on, on April 27th, 2017. Okay. Uh, and the amount of that settlement is uh, $5,000 to be paid to the order of Attorney Charles uh, Webb. The last is a settlement in the, amount, in the matter of Rafael Zepeda Guzman versus Clayton <coughs> County and Tyler Felke um, relating to an accident that occurred on or around July 11, 2016 at or near the southbound ramp from Interstate 75 to Mount Zion Boulevard in the amount of $170,000. Uh, those are the three uh, agreements. So a motion to approve? So moved. Yeah, second. Second. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. <coughs> and then um, there um, is a request to initiate rezoning of 1.9 acres of property in Mountain View uh, pursuant to uh, agreement um, uh, to resolve an uh, ongoing lawsuit. Is, is that a motion? Yes. No, I'm asking. Oh, is okay. that a motion? Community development to initiate the process to rezone that additional 1.9 acre tract uh, that's part of the Mountain View property up there uh, into the to the new warehouse district to complete the settlement of two of those three lawsuits. Right. So, is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Commissioner Davis, second the motion. Any questions? Hearing none. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. 
Anything else? That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Seeing nothing else before this board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chair. I'll second a motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Good night.